Sorry, fellas, but you have to admit, Australian men aren't exactly famous for their fashion sense. After all, you're the ones who gave the world stubbies and thongs. But I'm pleased to say all that is changing. In fact, now Aussie blokes are telling the world's most beautiful women what to wear. Two blokes in particular. Peter Alexander and Henry Roth are wowing them in America, the most cutthroat fashion market in the world. Peter makes pyjamas, very flash pyjamas. Henry creates spectacular bridal gowns. And both of them started from scratch, a real rags to riches story, you might say. Henry Roth feels on top of the world, and so he should. Straight, straight, love, look at it all. It's incredible. <laughs> New York, New York, so great, they named it twice, not once, and I know Woi Woi and Wagga Wagga, but hey. This Sydney boy's been flying high in New York ever since he came here to design bridal gowns 11 years ago. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's they say if you could make it here you could make it anywhere there is no tougher city than Manhattan than New York City there is no tougher city than this city it really is I believe this is the dormitory of the overachievers and everyone comes here to get a bite of the apple that's why they call it the big apple I just want a little piece but Henry's taken a dirty big chunk selling thousands of his exclusive frocks to brides from all over the world hey. let's give a little applause for our bride Fantastic. Let me wish you all the very best. You know, in New York City, why we stand out so much is because we have not lost that Australian value. It's the Australian values of being real and being decent and being sympathetic and empathetic to human beings. How many brides will you see today, for example? I will see probably 60 brides today. It's the Bridal Olympics. Right, look at the lines. I'm just beyond myself. <laughs> I am. I haven't even started. I hope you like it. <laughs> On the other side of the country, there's another Australian designer dealing with dreams of a different kind. This is Robertson Boulevard, and um, this is where it all happens. All, all the stars shop, and it's probably the most exclusive street now, the most sought-after street in. Uh, in, in LA. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you've got a shop in this town. People think you're spe special. Peter so, Alexander uh, makes pyjamas. Uh, those who buy them just can't seem to take off. Well, if you just see, there's a lady just walked out wearing one of my 90s as, as a dress. So, um, yeah. His $50 million business revolutionised sleepwear in Australia. Now he's hoping to do the same in America. Look, my name's on the footpath. That's fantastic. Do you mind taking off your shirt for me? Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <I love> this, <laughs> <job>. <laughs> this was this was this a good story for you, Leigh. <laughs> Just like he does in Australia, Peter insists on being involved at every level. Today, he's casting for next season's pajama catalogue. How's that for an, a little bot body? <laughs> That's getting depressing. <laughs> no, cancel lunch. Could everyone please cancel lunch? It's a plastic uh, surgery across the road, isn't there? Hi. How are you Good. How important is this part of the business for you? A model can make or break a, 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 a catalogue. I, I, I bring out uh, eight catalogues a year, and if I don't have the right model there, that catalogue definitely will, the, the sales will drop about 25%. Wow. So it makes a big diff difference. When Peter said he was going to make pyjamas, <laughs> what did you think? I thought it was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I didn't even know if it was such a great idea myself, but I thought I'll give it a go. Did you really not know the difference between cotton and wool? No, I still don't know how to sew a button on a shirt. Mum still has to sew my buttons on a shirt. No one loves Peter more than his own mother, Juliette. But even she was surprised by his success. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, he couldn't do anything. And I said, this is, oh my God, you know, I'm going to be looking after this child for the rest of my life. 
The early days weren't easy. Peter's dad had died and his mum had mortgaged the family home to start the business. It literally began at the dining table. Yeah, yeah. it did. It literally started and here. And we went back to the house and looked at that dining room where we were sitting or the, where we were working. And we said, it was so tiny. How did we do it? There was no <laughs> place. I mean, the table took up the whole place and yet we managed to run Stairs. this office. Yeah. <laughs> Are you videoing this one with Peter's famous? Mm. For more than a decade, Juliet was the other half of the business. This home video capturing the arrival of the very first Peter Alexander originals. This is how a millionaire starts off his business. I guess what I did find extraordinary was that you were playing the role of three people in those early days. Yeah, that was uh, funny. It was, it was this idea that people rang our office and we thought they thought we were a big corporation and we were just literally two schmucks sitting at a dining room table <laughs> in my mother's house. and. People got very intimidated yeah. speaking to Peter Alexander. Can I so, speak to accounts, please? Yes, so... Just, just hold on a minute, please. Accounts help. <laughs> so it was a bit like a, can I be put through to the stock room because my parcel's gone missing? I go, sure, and I'd go, g'day, Jim at the stock room. And it, we had to pretend we were much bigger than we were because we were such idiots. What started as a mail order business has turned into an empire. 30 stores across Australia, New Zealand, and now America. And it's not just PJs anymore. I've done a, a range called the, it's a daywear collection, and it's called the Robertson Boulevard Collection. And if you read the label carefully, it says, exclusively for young Hollywood. So if you're not rich and fabulous, put this down. <laughs> <laughs> These cheeky concepts now adorn everything from undies to Ud boots, but each starts life on a list. I just start writing down, you know, names and, and fabrics and colours and details, Domonte brooches, um, like Art Deco, things like that. I'm not a sketcher per se, but I just do, that's how the sort of concept starts. How does it feel? It feels fantastic. <laughs> good, it feels good. <laughs> For Henry Roth, the challenge is to take the traditional wedding gown and make it new again. We're taking what you did 40 years ago and we're now putting it into the 21st century. Excellent. So this tiered look... Henry trained as a lawyer, but couldn't resist being part of the family bridal company. One colour, not two colours. Well, I think two colours. A business his mum, Annetta, and dad, Joe, started in Australia after surviving the Holocaust. During the Second World War, Annetta was forced to make uniforms for the German army. Every day, she dreamt of making wedding dresses. To her, they're a symbol of hope. You particularly, both of you particularly like the bridal business. Yeah. Yes. Because? That's my wife's story. <laughs> We're emotional people, and I, our passion comes from the passion of what we do. And I think also, Liz, for my parents, it's very much about continuity and about yeah. hope. Yeah. So for them, the bridal industry is, yes, about making people happy, but it's also about generations continuing, the possibility to continue. I never realised to what extent my parents being Holocaust survivors has shaped my every day, my every minute of thinking, my motivation, how I treat people, why I create things, why I do fashion. And it's really, really um, profound. With that history and humility, 11 years ago, Henry moved to New York to work with his sister, Michelle. Was it much of a culture shock to go from Sydney to New York then? You know what, Liz, I can't even begin to explain to you the massive shock, the cultural volcano that is being in New York compared to Sydney, Australia. It, I felt like I was eating glass for breakfast. It was that tough. But Henry needn't have worried. New York not only embraced his designer gowns, but made him a television star along the way. In the pursuit of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me, Joan. Okay. All right. It seems to me you worked it out. You cracked the marketing code. 
Yes, I, I think that we did crack the marketing code. I'll, I'll be really honest with you. I mean, I think, you know, we were on every TV show you can possibly imagine, Inside Edition, Good Morning America, um, E! Networks, we were on E! Entertainment, we did our own books, and, absolutely. And don't, and who can ever forget Judge Roth? And Judge Roth, I find you guilty. You are guilty. His biggest role was as the judge on Style Court, a weekly show where people are found guilty for crimes against fashion. She's lost about 100 pounds. Look, you I'll lost show you. 100 pounds? Uh, let me show you. Can I show and, you? and your data looks yeah. fantastic. But his first love remains everything bridal. And I remember thinking, God, I wonder if they'll offer me like one million dollars. And I was thinking, what would you do with one million dollars? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to cut a long story short, and I, I won't tell you the actual figure, but when they, you know, they, it was like a movie where they write an amount on a piece of paper and they pass it to you. And they passed it to me and mum and we looked at it and we were like, oh, my. Like, you know, it was, it was just one of those moments where you think, Am I worth this, you know? And we just... His lawyer said, should I try for more? He I said, said, no, no just take it. I said, that's enough. I was like, this is, this is their first offer. I said, it's a good offer. Let's just take it. It was a deal made in heaven, but there was a catch. I said, I've got two conditions. One is I bring my dog to work and one is I bring my mother to work. In that order? Yes. Oh. And they, they, was, they were fine with the dog. The mother, they weren't that sure. <laughs> so, yeah. and then my, I must say, the dog lasted longer than my mother. <laughs> wow. Both Henry and Peter still marvel at what they've achieved. Oh, look. Uh, the old Uggies. <laughs> but after spending time with them, you can't help but think perhaps the simple secret to their success is their extraordinary passion for the job. I don't think I could just be involved in just an ordinary frock. It, this is a special frock and what it involves is people's humanities and it makes what I do make sense. You both seem like you can't believe it. Oh, I, can you? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, who would have thought that one day in my life you would see Peter Alexander and then hear tick, 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 tick. I mean, that to me is success. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.